In today's edition of Play Stupid Games, Win Stupid Prizes, a jury has found two men guilty of conspiring to kidnap Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer in 2020. Now, this is an ongoing story and some of the individuals who were charged in this case have been acquitted. However, that's not the case for Adam Fox and Barry Croft Jr. The jury found them guilty of conspiring to obtain a weapon of mass destruction, namely a bomb to blow up a bridge and stymie police if the kidnapping could be pulled off at Whitmer's vacation home. Uh, Croft, by the way, who's a trucker from Delaware, was also convicted of another explosives charge. And uh, here is the mugshot of the perps uh, who decided it would be a great idea to conspire to uh, you know, kidnap and harm a government official, governor of Michigan, of course. Uh, we've got some more details though. Uh, it was actually the second trial for these two men. A jury in April could not reach a unanimous verdict. Two other men who were acquitted uh, and two other men were acquitted and then uh, two more actually ended up pleading guilty and testified for prosecutors, so they turned on their homies and decided to help cooperate with this investigation. So according to Nils Kessler, who is the assistant US attorney in this case, he claims they wanted to set off a second American civil war, a second American revolution, something that they call the Boogaloo. And they wanted to do it for a long time before they settled on Governor Whitmer. It's interesting, there are some individuals who purport to be on the left who think we need to ally ourselves with the Boogaloo Boys. Seems like we have different goals here. They want to cause harm to government officials, including kidnapping and you know, blowing up bridges. We actually want better living conditions for every American. Anyway, the investigation also began thanks to an FBI informant, so someone who was part of the group started like hearing some of their plans and was concerned. And so the investigation began when Army veteran Dan Chapel joined a Michigan paramilitary group and became alarmed when he heard talk about killing police. He agreed to become an FBI informant and spent summer of 2020 getting close to Fox and others, secretly recording conversations and also participating in drills at shoot houses in Wisconsin and Michigan. And so uh, this is the ending to a, a long investigation, but it appears that justice is served, at least when it comes to these two individuals. Yeah, so uh, first of all, um, entrapment is real. So if I was on the jury, uh, I would have kept an open mind. Uh, and let me explain to you, uh, roughly speaking here, uh, what would be entrapment and what wouldn't be entrapment. Entrapment would be the guy, the FBI gets a guy in, in the group. These uh, yokels are sitting around drinking beer. Actually, it turns out they were getting high all the time, um, and that's literal. Um, so, and he says, "Hey, why don't we kidnap the governor? Hey, why don't we get a bomb?" And he plants the ideas. That's entrapment. Right. Um, whereas if the FBI has found an informant and these guys are already planning to kidnap the governor, hold her for ransom or kill her, or blow up a bridge, and the FBI gets the information to stop that crime from happening, that's awesome. That's exactly what the FBI and cops should be doing. So uh, they had the trial, the jury heard it. And the first time there was a couple of holdouts because the, by the way, his, their defense was. Uh, I thought did a good job from the very rough uh, outside view that I got on it, because uh, they kept saying like, "Oh my God, they they got, you know, they, they're they're against government tyranny and their uh, uh, beliefs and opinions are being used against them, not their actual actions, etc." But in the second jury, there were no holdouts; they were unanimous, uh, and the first jury was not evenly split. It was just a couple of holdouts going, "I don't know, maybe it's not such a bad idea." Uh, okay, <laughs> no. I think I think they might have been persuaded by the accusations that the federal officials had entrapped the the suspects. Uh, to be fair, that's certainly possible. We don't know the motivation of their original jurors at all. And like I said, entrapment is real, and they might have thought that that it was entrapment. Okay. Now it's also possible that they were um, triggered by the defense. So what do I mean by that? Um, the right wing in this country has been using the talking point about how your Second Amendment rights are to fight against government tyranny. So the minute you convince someone that a politician is being tyrannical, 
they are immediately triggered to think, "Oh, we should use our second amendment rights, our guns and our weapons against that government official. So they might find that to be perfectly legitimate. By the way, jury nullification could be real in some of these cases soon. So for anyway, but in the second trial, there was none of that. And it was, and all the jurors agreed, it was not entrapment. They definitely planned to do it. And of course, afterwards, Donald Trump, not after the second decision that just happened today, but earlier, Trump had called this prosecution a fake deal. So still encouraging violence, still saying, hey, anybody trying to kill Democratic politicians, it's not a big deal. Don't listen to the jurors, don't listen to the justice system, don't listen to the cops, don't listen to anyone. Oh, they were just trying to murder a governor. It's a fake deal. So yeah. well, scary times. It, it is scary times. And the last thing I have to say about this is, while it's important to ensure that justice is served and these kinds of plots are foiled by investigators, what concerns me is the same concern I had with the outcome of Alex Jones's defamation trial, which is to say, these are all symptoms of a deeper problem. And we got to get to that deeper problem, right? Because that hatred toward the government exists, the distrust toward our institutions exists. The violent rhetoric that we see from right wing political candidates and current politicians continues. And the question is, what do we do to mitigate that? You know, and I'm not calling for censorship, I'm not calling for doing away with people's constitutional rights. However, there is a problem when a huge portion of the country buys into the narratives that violent right wingers are spouting. And we gotta yeah. figure out why. Well, look, you're so right to point out the underlying problem. And again, the issue comes back to the establishment because of two things. One, they keep saying that this is a tiny, tiny extremist right wing minority. And even, and honestly, more than reporters, Democratic establishment does it. Democratic leaders on a regular basis go on TV and tell you how wonderful most Republicans are. And no, they're not getting the depth of the problem. Tons, tens of millions of Americans believe the, uh, these kind of lunatic theories about how you need to murder government officials uh, it, just to protect against government tyranny. So it is a super, and there's rising Christian nationalism. This is a super scary time and they're not getting the depth of the problem. But the other uh, issue with the establishment is that since they never acknowledge their own corruption, they never acknowledge their own lies. Oh, all the politicians are uh, wonderful and all the bribes they get uh, doesn't lead them to only work on behalf of corporations and rich people. Since they'll never ever acknowledge those lies, we can never get to a healing because the right wing is positive that they're right because they look at the lies of the mainstream media and, and the establishment and they go, well, then I know they're lying, so we must be telling the truth. When the reality is no, neither one of you are correct. The correct answer is, Yes, mainstream media is definitely lying. The politicians are definitely corrupt. Another poll out now is saying all major politicians in the country are deeply unpopular. Uh, Biden, terribly unpopular. Trump, even more unpopular. And the most unpopular of all is Joe Manchin. The media tells you the opposite, that Joe Manchin is the most moderate, reasonable guy in the country. They will never acknowledge the corruption. And that is what's, and we, if we don't solve that underlying problem, we're gonna have these misunderstandings that lead to grotesque situations like this over and over again.